Boom, 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 boom. A man and a woman had a little baby. Yes, they did. They had three in the family. That's a magic number. Boom goes the dynamite. I had to do three in the family. But today, ladies and gentlemen, that's right, we're back. The collaboration between NK News and the Nerd Generation. And we're not talking about three, we're talking about four. Then a fantastic four, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, I'm Tracy at Spivey4994. And with me, as always, from Nerd Generation, Pablo Sanchez Solano. P, what's going on? Not much, man. The same old, same old. The, the same old, the same move, the same get go. <clears throat> Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are continuing the acclaimed, and I'm glad to say that, the acclaimed MCU Future Series. That's right. That collaboration, the MCU Future Series, just burning down walls and knocking down doors. I kind of like that. In fact, I'm part of it. I appreciate it. Once again, before we even jump into it, ladies and gentlemen, please stay safe. Social distancing is working. Wash your hands. Don't wash them off. But then, ladies and gentlemen, we start in the MCU Future Series. I'm happy about this show because I'm excited about this show. I love the Fantastic Four. That's like we say we love sci-fi. I love the FF. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to jump into it. We're going to do it the right way. Let's go back. Ah, let's go back. The year, 2015. The MCU put out two movies that year. If you guys don't remember, if you want to turn back the class. The two movies were, that's right, the sequel to The Avengers. The Avengers Age of Ultron. And then later on that year, Ant-Man. Needless to say, Disney and Marvel Studios will make a couple of billion dollars. Ant-Man was a complete success. We would say uh, normal as usual, P, but not really normal because Disney thought they would make more money off of Agent Ultron coming off the Avengers movie. I would yeah. expect it too. But something happened that day because we saw Age of Ultron together down on Lincoln Center. What happened? There was something different about Age of Ultron. We, we, we both said our uh, reasons why. I think it was yeah. Josh Whedon. But yeah. I liked it. Age of Ultron was, was a well-thought-out movie. It was okay. I I just think that um, Ultron, uh, in the comics, oh. he's, he is a formidable opponent. He's yeah, a formidable opponent, and uh, I think he f- sort of felt to me like the evil, twisty mustache guy. Okay, so Ultron didn't get enough composition. I mean, look at it, Pete. Can't you be happy? You got the Hulk buster. You got the cap lifting the hammer tentatively. You got a whole yeah. lot of MCU stuff. You got oh, yeah. them finally turning uh, Stark Tower into MC... Uh, Lord, what's the no, name of that just, tower? But no, y- tower? Y'all know what I'm talking about. But yeah, you got you got all the of the stuff to keep the fans jumping in the, and the lunchbox selling. Yeah. But there was something about Ultron. Fox put out a movie... The re, re, relaunching of the Fantastic Four. Ladies and gentlemen, Fantastic Four 2015 was, it had a budget of 100 to 20 to 155 million. It was produced by Simon Kinberg and yes, Matthew Vaughn. That's right, X-Men First Class, Matthew Vaughn. Obviously the relationship is there. We all know the relationship was there because he worked with the Fox films with, uh, with Simon Kinberg, but no Brian Singer. That X-Men generation had passed by 2015, but let's talk about it. His name was Josh Trank, and he was commissioned to make the reboot of the Fantastic Four. And P, what did we get? We got Miles Tiller. Yes, yes. Michael B. Of course. <laughs> Why? Listen, I'm not saying he's in every movie. <laughs> And two other people that play Sue and, and Ben. Now nah, I'm only kidding. Um, she's great. With she was, she was a millennial Sue Storm. He's a great actor that played Ben Grimm. If you guys can get the names for me, I didn't put that in my notes when we were doing the show notes. I had to run out of here. The helicopter dropped me off, and I had to come in the house. But anyway, I saw Josh Trank's Fantastic Four 2015. Yeah. I like Toby Kebbell, oh, good yeah, British great. actor. Yes, fantastic. Should have never been Victor Von Doom, but that's the Fox universe, and that's what they do over there. I thought the movie was serviceable. I thought it was a little darker in tone. I didn't mm-hmm. think that they hit on the fact that 
The Fantastic Four, why being? Let me tell you something. If you don't know this, boys and girls, the Fantastic Four is sci-fi. They really are in-depth with sci-fi. So if you like science fiction, that is the Fantastic Four. They are science fiction adventurers. You can put, once you put that in your head, you, you're not, you're, you're not going to go. You're not going to go wrong. Now, Josh Trank's 2015 Fantastic Four, I thought it was C at best. Mm-hmm. And maybe because they didn't have enough money, and I, mean, I don't, the, I don't the, even care about the, the story. special effects, with all the special effects, they had money. To they had some actors, money. They, they, to get those actors, they had money. Oh, well, you're talking about, you're talking about Michael B. Sorry, now, I think that's what you mean. <laughs> now, I'm not kidding. Miles Tiller had just came off an Academy nomination. So these act, these young actors were caught at the right time, and there I specify, these were young actors. I guess Fox wanted to turn around the matrix of the Fantastic Four and make them young actors. I, I don't think that was the problem. I, just I can tell think, you exactly what the problem was. But go oh, ahead. let's hear what you think. What, what, okay. what was the problem with 25? Other than uh, Trank's stories, Josh Trank's stories about him, you know, going left. In 2015, yeah. you got to think about what yeah. came before that. Well, 2015, let's put it back on the table. You're in com- competition with Marvel Studios, Fox. Yeah, and, I'm, I'm and, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, think You're in competition. This. Think about this. We already got Iron Man in 2008. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven movies. The train is gone. Yeah. The train is gone. It has left. You cannot catch up. What they attempted to do was start sort of start off their own franchise of things, and it was just too late. It was too late. Everybody wanted these characters back home. And that's where it ended up. Yeah, being. yeah, okay. The fan base wanted everything back at Marvel Studios. And, and that was a, a public sentiment. That was public. And I'll say one more thing. I don't know if you saw The Dark Phoenix. Uh, Did you see The Dark Phoenix? Yeah, I saw the movie. I have the movie, yeah. Listen, listen. I don't think it was that bad of a movie, but... Yeah, you're right. It is, you're it, it, right. Was just, it was just too late. The MCU was already yeah, too late. rolling. It, and come it's on, too late. Guardians of the Galaxy came out in 2014. Too late. It was too late. You can't so compete. They won. Marvel Studios won. Anything that you put out, let's say Universal decided to put out the Submariner, it probably would have tanked. Probably would have tanked. I think, you know what? Yeah, because you're now facing the juggernaut. The juggernaut, the, the, the juggernaut's out. That's it's out. It. 2015, That's when it. Ant-Man did better than most of the films that some Ant, Ant-Man and look at what Ant Man went through. This kid quit. We had to find another director. They put the movie out, scotch with scotch tape and glue, and it was still great. Yeah. Ant Man was still great. Yeah. And that was the world that Kimberg's and Matthew Vaughn's uh Fantastic Four had to compete with. Yeah. I I just think I think you know what? Sixty percent of what you're saying is correct, in my opinion. What's the forty percent? That, 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 no, no, the sixty percent <laughs> where it, you couldn't compete with Marvel. It's too late. Marvel's yeah. already the beast. The, the dog yeah. is out the yard. Yeah. The other forty percent, ladies and gentlemen, and um, we're not here to d- disparage anyone, but the other forty percent was the nonsense that was going on around this film. The, the stories what? that were coming out was crazy. Which story? He fired about about Trank. And, and and here's the worst thing in the world. What happened? All the things were being leaked. Everybody was finding out. Yeah. And then that's when the drones were beating. Give it back. Give it back. Give it back. Oh, give it back. <laughs> Keep the X Men. Keep the X Men. But give it back. Give it back. Give it back. And and it just seems like um, a bad situation all around. It, an attempt was made with a budget of 120 to 155 million. Plus you got to add on marketing. And okay, and they I think took it on received too much of 50, a risk. It, it it only made fifty million dollars. So I would have never lost. made that bet. If you Tracy would have told me, "Yo, Paolo, let's make this movie Fantastic Four. We got a budget of two hundred mil. Will we make it dope? Yeah, but I don't oh, that movie be make... dope. <laughs> that would be dope. We'll be able to compete with Marvel. Man. I'm destroying it. Oh, but see, there it is. If I'm within the Marvel Studios, oh, this is gonna be dope. 
If I'm outside looking in, I might not even want to make this movie. I want to be in there with them. I, I'm, I'm out like on a, I'm on an island out here. So the Fantastic Four don't know the X-Men. You haven't created a universe. I know what we're up against. i got to make a solo movie with four superheroes and their universe, which you could do, but it would still feel, it doesn't feel right. It's almost like you've done what we said about Spider-Man. Spider-Man not being in an MCU, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't. Some of these characters, and whether Stan and Jack did it intentionally, Without mm-hmm. being in the universe, they don't feel right. Yeah. Let's go back to the Solo Hulk movie. What was that, 2007 with Eric Banya? Or 2003, was it? What was that I th- movie? I think it was 2003, actually. Wait, let me let me yeah. look that up. But go ahead. Now, the Hulk was jumping around in the desert and whatnot, and they made his father the catalyst. I mean, they changed all. There was no Hulk dogs. There was no war dogs. None of that happened in the original story with... Uh, Lee and, and Kirby, but the Hulk's in this universe. They, uh, not, not for nothing. There's nothing to stop him. There's no other heroes. There's no nothing. Yeah. So these heroes being outside in these solo projects, unfortunately or fortunately, it just doesn't seem to work. Yeah. Um, Trank's Fantastic Four is another attempt. Well, they try to. I remember, I remember these articles. They used to just just aggravate me to death. Will they try to? Connect them with the Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four and the X-Men really never really connected that much in the books. I'm not yeah, used to yeah, the Fantastic yeah. Four and the X-Men intermingle. That that wasn't the case. Yeah. I mean, what? Ugh. You know, it, does, it, <laughs> it wouldn't work. I'm used, to, I'm used to the Fantastic Four going to the negative zone. I'm yeah, used to Blastar. I'm used to Galactus. That is the science Fair. fiction. I, yeah, science fiction. If FF are completely, best, right I'm not, and, and not saying that mutant gene isn't, but the X Men are something separate. I mean, that's why you could sell the X Men franchise off to someone else, and they could build a whole universe around it. Yeah. They really could. Yeah. Only part, yeah. only problem usually is when you give somebody else your property, they don't know what to do with it. They mess it up, or they yeah. misrepresent it, or, or or whatever. But you put out this Fantastic Four movie, and then also at the same time on tele on television, they put out that Legion TV show. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Again, Trey, it's people trying to capitalize on the success of Marvel. They wanted to be that derivative. It just it wasn't the same. Overall, like I said, I gave Josh Trank's uh, Fantastic Four movie a C. Yeah, I I, I agree with that grading. I agree, I, agree I can that. watch it every once. In a while, and I read and Ben. That was like the best relationship there. Yeah. The father, the the parental relationship that he had with Johnny and Sue, mixed, uh, adopted. Okay, I, I guess you're trying to modernize it and try to throw a, a punch. And then once again, there is the creative control situation again. There you go, trying to throw a punch to make it different. You don't want to stick mm-hmm. to. Lee's and Kirby's interpretation. So every director wants to come in and put their own spin on it. Well, I don't kind of like want your spin. I know who Reed is. I know who Sue is. I know who Johnny is. I know who Ben is. Let them be who they are. Now put a spin. And I know who Don't Doom is. The Surfer is. I know who Galactus is. Can you give me that? Don't give me the big gas cloud. That yeah. never worked. That listen. That was that. Movie when the I cartoon heard, kept it more faithful. Oh, oh yeah, the cartoon was. Uh, I tell you that first episode of uh, the, the first Fox two cartoon episodes, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, the first two episodes of that story is amazing. When Tim Story put out Fantastic Four, it was okay. It's a little bit ridiculous when I look at it now. And the but we had nothing one, else to judge it by. Yeah, there was exactly, no MCU. Exactly. exactly. Um, so we were excited just to see it being yes. done. Uh, I guess it did enough to, to warrant a sequel. So the sequel, when I heard it was Silver Surfer, because Silver Surfer is one of my favorite characters, and Galactus, I was like, oh my God. And when they made him into a cloud, it's just total disrespect, man. I'm pretty sure when they were pitching this, oh, we're going to do Galactus, it's going to co- cost how much? Forget it, let's just make it into a cloud. They just totally disregard Galactus. Uh, and, it was, and, and that ruined it for me. What was almost as bad as Galactus? The... Touch you and my powers transfer. Oh, I can't do this. 
and the what? general talking to Reed Richards the way he did. Are you crazy? Yeah, yeah. I hate to say this, but forget the fact that he's Mr. Fantastic. He is one of the three smartest people on the planet. Yeah. Who are you talking to? Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I mean, and then you put, you put, you know what? Anyway, anyway, <laughs> that was Tim Story's Fantastic Four. We jumped to Josh Trank's Fantastic Four. But now, ladies and gentlemen, da -da -da, the property came home. I think we fainted, passed out. We were on, we, I mean, I remember, I remember that fight. We, every time Disney made a bid, Comstat made a bid, Disney made a bid, Comstat, I, I thought we were going to fight this out. Mm -hmm. I just wanted, and, and ladies and gentlemen, let's all put it right. Everybody in the public said, we just want the Marvel property back. Keep every damn thing. We don't even want, who cares? Just give us back. And people, when I'm saying this, I'm not just saying this as a, as a fan. Mm -hmm. Marvel Studios was making these movies a billion dollar industry. Just yeah. give me the Marvel stuff back. You can keep the Simpsons and, and keep it. Shit. I, I'm not, I, I don't want it. Just give me this. You, hey, this Trey, is great you think, stuff. You, you think they would have paid another ten or fifteen billion just to get it because they wanted it. They wanted it. They wanted Let me tell you something. I, and, and, and let's be real. I would tell Fox. The only thing made that deal was the Marvel stuff. I'm telling you that to your face. You don't want to hear it. I'm not disrespecting all the other stuff. Fox Sports and all the rest of that. But what was the what was the one? that everybody wanted over at Disney. We want our IP back. Yep. Sony was saying, no, no, no. <laughs> you're going to have to deal. Sony said, you're going to have to deal with me. I want in on this. No, you're going to have to deal with me. Fox, buy the whole thing. You can have your Marvel stuff back. Because we ain't selling you back the Marvel stuff. Reed Richards, Sue Storm, and, I, and, and that's speculative because I don't know if they're going to introduce us to her and him already married or will they actually go the original route that they aren't married yet but along with Sue Storm she actually was tagging along her kid brother and of course there's uh, Reed's confidant or maybe best friend I don't know how they're going to place the relationship with Reed and Ben but Ben was a Air, Air Force pilot who knew Reed who was a Sign, who was basically a prodigy working for the government. Uh, but, you know, I liked the Heroes Reborn reboot mm -hmm. that uh, Jim Lee and a couple other guys did for Marvel where they rebooted the Fantastic Four. Same origin, same story, but they mm -hmm. just did like a Heroes Reborn. And let me tell you something. I, I mean, that the Fantastic Four Heroes Reborn was just awesome. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's when, ladies and gentlemen, the all-powerful Franklin Richards had to protect mommy, daddy, and their friends and put them in an alternative universe after mm -hmm. Professor X and Magneto created Onslaught. That's a, go to your comics. That, that's a great <laughs> read. But yeah. Heroes of Born Fantastic Four was awesome. But, yeah. but, and why? Because they got the characters right. I think if you do the Fantastic Four, it doesn't matter what time, time of time setting like remember those stories you heard they were going to put the, the fantastic four retro they wanted to make well then how how could you put them retro and be in the same universe with the winter soldier you, yeah. you can't yeah so all these things that they were spitballing across the screen do this do that i think they're going to put them modern modern mcu whatever the, whatever the hell that means now uh, after wanda and mouth of madness who, who yeah, knows what yeah. the hell that means yeah I, no, I think uh, we'll probably get introduced to them in in Ant Man three, but I don't want to spoil anything. But from what I've heard, and I think that it's it sounds like a pretty legitimate uh, story that they're going to tell us about the Fantastic Four. They're already going to be the Fantastic Four, I think. Okay, oh, so they know each other. That don't mean that they yeah. They're okay. going to be in that city that uh, in in the quantum realm that. They flew by when uh, um, Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer flew off. If you pause that, you see a city uh, in a dome. And uh, more, uh, some people are saying that it, that is Chronopolis. And this is where, uh, obviously, we know that uh, Kang the Conqueror runs that. So okay. I think we're going we're gonna to start off with that. I think that they have a lot to play with with regards to how to tell this story and how they gain their power. Michelle Pfeiffer... Her character already set it up, right? 
If so, they go this route, or uh, you know, if they go this route and maybe Reed goes into the quantum realm with them, but then mm-hmm. uh, maybe maybe they're gonna keep it. Reed goes into space and get they get bombarded by cosmic rays. I, 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 I mean, I don't, I don't know. know. They're gonna go that route. I don't think they're gonna go that route. Honestly, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, fan casting has been absolutely outrageous for the last year on who should be in the Fantastic Four. And obviously, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. He is not the most popular character in the Marvel Universe. Outside two true eggheads, true heads, but Richards is one of the most important characters in the MCU universe. He is one of the most respected characters. All, All the above. All of the above. But now, for somehow, some way, John Krasnaski, who was who was up for uh, the Captain America role, he actually read for it. Mm-hmm. But ladies and gentlemen, Reed Richards, Mister Fantastic, has never been this popular as he is of right now on this podcast. Yeah, it's amazing. He's never been. It's amazing. Reed Richards has never been this popular. I know who Reed is, but general public don't know who Reed is. But all you say is John Krasinski. Maybe it's, maybe it's from The Office. Maybe it's from Jack Ryan. But all I know is Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, has never been as popular as he is right now today. That means cha-ching. Well, I think what also that implies is Kevin, Kevin Feige is not, not, not dumb. <laughs> And here's the dilemma that you and I both talked about. Ladies and gentlemen, John is married to Miss Emily Blunt. Miss Emily Blunt was supposed to have been the Black Widow. And we are talking about all the way back to Iron Man 2. That's right. A thousand years ago with Iron Man 2, Emily Blunt was supposed to be Black Widow. She had to turn down the role because she was already in contract to make a movie with <clears throat> Jack Black called <laughs> Gulliver's Travels. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Jack Black. That's right. The Jack Black, the comedian. I think you were great in Tropical Thunder. I mean that. I thought you was. I thought you was awesome. I, I'd have beat you with a baseball bat, but I thought you was great in Tropical Thunder. But anyway, Tropic, Emily Tropic. turned down. <laughs> I think she would have been a great Black oh, Widow. No, she, oh, oh yeah, certainly. Scarlett Hands Johansson down. lucked out. She better thank her. She better thank her. Yeah, Scarlett Joe. <laughs> you know what it is, Scarlett? Honey, I'm used to you now. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm used to you now playing Black Widow. I can't see anybody yeah, she's else. Great. Yeah, she's great. It's so funny that now Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman, who for the majority of the history were not the two most popular characters in that group. The two most popular characters in that group, ladies and gentlemen, was the high flying human torch and the and the yeah. and, and, and the thing. The, thing, yeah. the ever loving thing. Yeah. The thing was so popular, the thing was second only to Spider Man in the Marvel Comics. The mm-hmm. Thing and Spider-Man had their own set series of other books. Nobody, they didn't even have Captain America, didn't have as many books as The Thing did. Spider-Man and The Thing had several other titles. Yeah. Because that's how popular it was. The, the crossover. Spider-Man things. and The Thing, they, they were the crossovers. Why? Because their two characters can blend in, whether it's magic, science, or street level. You mm-hmm. can see The Thing fighting with The Punisher. You can see oh, The yeah. Thing fighting with Daredevil. And with the Hulk. And then, of course, you can see the thing. Colossus. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the thing teaming up with the X-Men. Ladies and gentlemen, the thing was like the ambassador back in the 70s. I wonder if we're going to get that back, Pete. And that all depends on who the casting is. That's why we had said The Rock Rock wouldn't have never worked because The Rock wouldn't want his face covered up. You know why this, um, the thing is going to work? Because it sells. They can oh, I love the thing. Yeah, who doesn't love the you thing? Know what I'm saying Disney. Who doesn't love at Ben the, Grimm? At, at, the, at the end of the day, is you know what it is? It's business. They can capitalize <laughs> on it and make more money on top of more money. Of course, they're gonna do it with someone like that because it could appeal to kids. Are you kidding me? Yeah, everybody loves the thing. The thing was to change, to change, to change. But um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this straight. Uh, for Marvel, this is perhaps one of the most important films. Or turning points for Marvel that that if it fails to it has to be more than just okay it can't be Thor 
It can't be First Avenger, uh, Captain America: First Avenger. Those were decent films. The first, the first of the iterations. The second ones obviously was fantastic with the with the Winter Soldier. They were basically introduction movies. Basically. Yes, but I don't think we need to be in, reintroduced to the Fantastic Four in that sense with origin films or whatever the case may be. I don't think we need that. I think, like I, like I said before, I think Fantastic Four, they're already going to be uh, the, the quartet. Uh, and um, they're already going to already have their story at, in a more advanced stage of their careers as superheroes. Really? So you're skipping the origin story for the MCU. So how do you explain them? And then where were you in the big fight with Thanos? They'll throw it. They'll throw it in there. They'll throw it in there. I, I, I think oh, oh. we've heard already that it's going to be some sort of period piece. Is remember time works differently in the quantum realm. So let's say they went down. So, so wait a minute. You you automatically got the you automatically got the Fantastic Four in the quantum realm. You're yes. actually going to go with that that theory. Yes. yes. Oh wow! Wow. Yes. Because they just can't turn into the Fantastic Four now. I don't think so. I don't think they're going that route. Again, the quantum realm works differently. So they could have gotten out. They could have been in the in the quantum realm since 1960s, 70s, and come out just now. Who know? But I think that, that would complete that, that would completely change that would completely change their origin. But okay, yeah, yeah. But you got a lot to play with because of the snap. The snap is the. Is the big bang? Oh, the snap is the the snap is the big bang of everything. Yes. You can so, now do anything. Well, and then Doctor Strange and Wanda Mar is the yeah, whole exactly. reality check. Ex exactly. So, again, nothing is impossible for Marvel at this point. As I said before, the two superstars of that quartet, Human Torch and Ben Grimm. Uh, ben Grimm is um, very, very, very important to. Mobile Studios, because like we said, Ben Ben is the cell, yeah. uh, the the lovable monster, the, the 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 guy that plays poker with the rest of the heroes. I mean, there's so much to Ben Grimm. Him and Matt Murdock Isn't having like lunch. As much money as they can out the thing. That's what that's just what they do. That's just what they do. <laughs> they make money off of it. And I, and I and I hope the character design looks like the thing, yeah. looks like the Jack Kirby or even John Burns character characterization of the thing and i and i have to ask you if fantastic four doesn't do well or is it well received what do you think happens i can't that? see that i can't, can't see, see that, that. Okay. i can't i can't see it not being well received people have been dying for this movie they would literally have to mess up not to do this right they would literally have to mess up. Now, once again, here's the other part, a very important part. He was he was the most famous member of the Fantastic Four, the Human Torch. Mm -hmm. The speculation is they're going to stick to the books, and the Human Torch will be Spider-Man's best friend. Eventually, they're going to go to school together, and Peter Parker will know Johnny Storm. And they will meet on the top of the uh, Statue of Liberty like they, <laughs> like they always do. <laughs> when they want to test <laughs> and everybody wonders we know how Johnny gets out there how does Peter get all the way out there on the spider web like how the hell do you get all the way <laughs> yeah I'm, it, it, I mean if you didn't guys didn't know because we're letting you know that uh, Peter Parker I mean that Spider-Man and Human Torch are like Superman and Batman They're be they are best friends like for real I mean, I'm sure they'll play that out. I'm sure they'll play that out. But this, just the fact that they're not going to make Johnny older, that Johnny's going to be, quote, a teenager, a kid, playing the Human Torch. Listen, man, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine Marvel not doing it right. But it is an important film. Because it sets up other yeah. situations like Doom and, and, and Galactus, Silver Surfer, those things. And last but not least... Let's talk about Dr. Doom. You saw the two previous, the three previous incantations, Roger Corman's uh, B-movie, where you have to adjust the screen so you can actually see, <laughs> mm -hmm. you can actually see him. 
And then Tim Story's Doctor Doom, he reminded me too much like um, an evil Blake Carrington from Dynasty. It was. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think Doctor Doom should be represented the way Dr. Doom should be represented. He is a scientist and a sorcerer on level with, on par and on level with all of them. When I say all I of hope, them, I'm talking about T'Challa, talking about Reed, Tony, Hank. I hope yeah. that we get the story that uh, tells the audience of his motivation. Okay, the story. You really want to even go to the part about Mephisto? All and his that. mother? All that. Not wow. but not and, not initially that there has to be indications of Oh that. no, well you can save that. Save it. You don't have to let everybody know that Mephisto yeah. has his mother's soul. Yeah. But there has to be some motivation as to why they do why he does it. He just can't be a dude again, just a mean guy. Why is he just a mean oh, guy? The, the, you know, the, there's something the twirling mustache? Yeah. The Simon Box Sinister? Be, yeah. Thanos already spoiled us. Thanos already spoiled us. We can't get Whack villains. Baron Zemo, you understood. I, I'm looking forward to Baron Zemo in the Winter Soldier. And Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I'm looking forward to him. He, he was a good villain. Zemo's a good villain. villain uh, Zemo ain't twisting the mustache. And we could just say, this guy's messed up because of what happened to his family. He's, I mean, the fact that at the end of it, and I like what the Russos did there, they made this guy somewhat psychotic. He's playing the last message on the, I mean, I would tell Cap, you, we got to take him out. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It does, Zemo does make you separate from um, crossbows. Where crossbones is just a gun for hire. Zemo, there's something wrong with him. It's, it's a tragic story, but you get why he does what he does, and you get why Thanos did what he did. It's it, they're psychotic, but you under you, you kind of get it. Now, how they develop Doctor Doom is like you said. Very, very, very important. That has to be done the correct way. Yes. Doctor Doom will not be killed off in the first movie. Doctor Doom the will second, be the third or the fifth. Plant t- <laughs> um, huh? The, he, he's not going to be killed the second or third or the fifth. He, they got. Oh no, Doctor Doom's not being killed off. He's not getting killed off. You want a fan cast real quick? Jason Isaacs from Star Wars. No, that's oh, that's um, Oscar Isaac. That's yeah, Oscar yeah. Isaac. I'm sorry, Jason Isaacs. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Jason Isaacs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he's in Harry Potter. He was yeah. in uh, he was in the Patriot. He was in Peter Pan. Oh, uh, the Cure for uh, Wellness, Star Trek Discovery. Uh, he the was Ra's al Ghul in Under the Red Hood. Oh wow, the Fantastic Four is very important to the MCU. Um, I really hope that Emily takes the role. If she doesn't, there's a there's a whole thing right then and there. I think the fact that you actually had, or you could possibly have two actors that are actually married, play the number one man and wife couple in the Marvel universe. Like, are you yeah. kidding me? You yeah. can't even make this up. Yeah. And you can't say, oh, they formulated it. No, they didn't. What if the, the deal with Fox didn't go through? I mean, I mean it, it seems like this thing was written in the stars. Yeah, man. The opportunity is there, and I don't think Marvel's going to mess it up. We're going to get we're gonna get something done. Well, it's, it's up to yeah. her if she takes the role. Yeah, I, I don't think she's... I don't Listen, I think it's posturing. I think it's the, the numbers probably aren't right for her. Um, if they Marvel has the money to get, yeah, but they Marvel. got your husband. And, I said the numbers yeah. aren't right, but they got your husband. because yeah. <laughs> he want to be. He don't I mean, care that man, me. that that <laughs> man, that man will leave Jack Ryan and leave. What, what's his horror movie? What was it? What's it called? Don't make a sound. Oh, quiet, quiet, yeah, quiet. <laughs> quiet in the, the room. Quiet, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> quiet, but they I, said, I John, that, we I want you to be, we want you to be rich. Riches. It's done. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Yeah. The, yeah okay. Well, all right. No what do I write my name? Done. Yeah. Uh, we really want your wife, but she's giving us a hard time. That's yeah. done too. I'm going home later. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Listen, John. Take it easy. Yep. <laughs> take it easy, John. We don't want no problems. <laughs> we, don't, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, MCU future series. 
AK News with Nerd Generation, and we are talking about the Fantastic Four. The series will continue. We still have many other characters to get into, and we can't even wait to talk about the Punisher. So John Barathol is getting a movie so, first. So what you, um, what, what, what show you think we're gonna do next? Let's keep the, the people excited for the next one. Well, after the, after this Fantastic Four, well, um, well, I think you know what's gonna be. It's probably gonna be dictated by what news breaks out first. Okay, so once again, this is Tracy at Spidey Four Nine Nine Four along with Pablo Solano of Nerd Generation. And we will see you later.